Hi everybody and welcome back to the Cupcake Gemma channel with me, Sally, and I am here at the Crumbs and Doilies kitchen in Wandsworth, London, the UK, and it is a big day for us because today is the very first day that you can order your freshly baked New York Crumbs and Doilies cookies straight to your door. That is right guys, and you can order them online and you'll get them the next day. They are fresh, they are delicious, it's as if you've come to our store in Soho, but instead you can stay at home and sit on your sofa and eat cookies. So make sure you do that after you have watched this video. And what is this video? As promised, it is for a chocolate silk pie. Yeah, I told you guys last week that I was going to show you it and I'm super excited and it all starts with a pie crust and I'm going to make my pie crust in a food processor but you can make this by hand if you don't have one it, just do the kind of rubbing technique um, but I have quite warm hands and I've got a food processor here so I am using mine so I'm going to start with 255 grams of plain flour and that is going to go straight into my mixer and into that I'm going to put about half a teaspoon of salt I don't have a measure so I'm going to use my fingers go with a good pinch in there and next we need butter obviously now butter needs to be really cold like the secret to getting a really amazing pie crust is it has to stay cold the entire time before we put it into the hot oven so i chopped this up a while ago and i put it back into the fridge so it's really really firm and you want to get it out just before you put it into your food processor so i've chopped it up really small here and it's 170 grams and that's also going into our food processor and now I'm going to pop on the lid and we're going to pulse this and we're not going to pulse it too far because we want to keep some buttery chunks in it. So watch and learn, hopefully. <laughs> And you can see just after a few seconds of pulsing, it's broken the butter down, but we've still got these quite large nuggets in there. And that is exactly how we want it, because we want this to be really flaky pastry, and that is how you do it. So next up, we need to bind it all together, and we're gonna do that with some water, now ice cold water. So I actually put in a few ice cubes into this bowl of water to make sure that it is as cold as it can be. And we're gonna use about five and a half tablespoons of our icy cold water and to it we are going to add hang on i'm trying to count and talk at the same time <laughs> i'm going to add about three quarters of a tablespoon of cider vinegar so that's going to go in there little magic ingredient there for you now i'm not going to add all of this straight away because we don't want to make this too wet if it's if it's too dry we can add some more liquid but if it's too wet We've kind of ruined it. So I'm going to add about three quarters of the liquid straight into the food processor. And then we're going to go back on with the lid and again, just pulse it for a little bit until it starts to come together. So I'm just testing this by squeezing it together between my fingers and thumb. And hopefully you can see it's looking a little bit dry still. So I am going to add the rest of my liquid and then a final pulse, not for very long, because remember we want to keep some chunky bits of butter in there. And so hopefully this will do it. And that looks much better. So now we're going to bring it all together and I'm going to do that on the work surface. So let me just clear some space. I just move these cookies over here because they're in my eyesight and I'm just going to eat them and I need to focus here. Right, so tip all your pastry onto the surface here. And now, first of all, we're going to bring it together with our hands, just gently squeezing it in, not working it too much because again, we want to keep it nice and cold and we want to keep those lumps of butter in there. So once it's all come together, just a very, very gentle knead just to make sure it is one nice dough. And that, my friends, is it. So now we need to chill this because if we rolled this out and baked it, it's just gonna shrink up because it's way too warm, it's way too squishy. So what I'm gonna do is form it into a little disc just to make it easier when it comes to actually rolling this out. And I've got some plastic wrap here cling film, I don't know what you want to call it. <laughs> I'm just going to wrap it up 
and then we're going to leave this in the fridge for a minimum of like two hours but the best thing to do is if you have time is to do this the day before and then we'll take it out about 10 minutes before you want to roll it. So luckily for you and for me, I made myself some pie dough yesterday and I've had it chilling in the fridge overnight and I took it out about 10 minutes ago just so it makes it a little bit easier for us to roll out without it cracking all over the place. Now before we get rolling, let's just talk a bit about our pie dish. So I have this lovely little 8 inch pie dish here because it's perfect for one. <laughs> it's not, it's probably perfect for at least six. Um, and the thing I like to look for in a pie dish is that it has a lip like this. Um, that just means that the pastry crust has something to kind of sit on. Um, and lots of people like to use a glass dish, but I also really like these little enamel ones as well. I think they bake really, really well. So that's just gonna sit over there. Now we can do the fun part, which is rolling out our pie dough. So I'm gonna aim for around four to five millimeter thickness. Um, we're gonna dust the surface with a little bit of flour, not too much flour, you don't wanna cake your dough in flour, okay? Just a very light dusting, and we can add a little bit more as we go if we need to. Grab yourself a nice large rolling pin. Again, I'm just putting a tiny bit of flour on here. And we're just gonna do this very gently and very slowly. We're gonna start from the center of our dough, push down and roll it out and it might feel like it's taking ages but just go nice and slowly because we really don't want this to crack. So as you can see I'm rotating my dough 90 degrees every time I roll so I'm going forwards once and back and then I'm turning it 90 degrees and that is gonna help us get a round circle. I know sometimes you're kind of rolling things out and they end up in these really odd shapes uh, and hopefully this will just kind of help you get it into more of a round. And also when you're rolling, just try really hard to apply the same amount of pressure all the way through the roll so that you don't end up with a lumpy, bumpy bit of pastry. So let's just keep going until we get to four to five millimeter thickness. So when you think you're getting to about the right size, we can check this by grabbing your pie dish and you can very lightly place it on top of your dough. And what we want is at least an inch and a half all the way around the edge, because remember, it's got to go inside the dish and have a little bit hanging out. So I'm just going to go for a couple more rolls just to stretch it a tiny bit further. So I think we are there. Let's just have a final check. That's looking good. So what I'm gonna do before I put it into my tin is grab myself a knife and I'm actually going to cut off just the raggedy little bits of edge here. It's just gonna help us to get it nice and neat once we've got it into our pie dish. Next, we need to pick it up. So if you're feeling brave and you've done this before, you can do this by hand. But if you've got, maybe you've got a bigger pie dish and it's a lot of pastry, the top tip for this is to use your rolling pin to assist you. So you pop your rolling pin onto your pastry. You're gonna flip it over like that. And et voila, we've lifted it up and we haven't even touched it. And then you can roll it over your pie dish. And then before we push it in, we just wanna make sure it's kind of in the, in the middle as much as possible. So you can very lightly just kind of shuffle it around and then it's time to get this in. So I'm picking up the edges like this and I'm very gently, gently forcing, I don't know, <laughs> that doesn't make sense, but gently persuading it to go inside our pie dish. And then I'm gonna use the kind of back of my finger here and I'm gently pushing it into the crease. And next up, obviously we need to deal with this kind of excess skirt that we've going on here. So what we're gonna do is fold it under so that we get that nice chunky little bit of crust around the outside. But as you can see, I've got a lot over this side and not as much over here. So I'm gonna get my scissors this time. <laughs> you can use a knife, but scissors are a great kitchen tool, you know. And I'm gonna trim it off so that I've got about an inch as you can see, between the edge of the pastry and the top of the tin there. Yeah. 
And once we've done that, like I said, we're going to start by folding the top edge over to make a lovely, crispy, chunky crust. And once that's done, I'm kind of running my hands around the edge just to kind of try and even it out a little bit. And because I've been handling this now for about five minutes, it has obviously started to warm up. And so what I'm gonna do now, before we do any kind of crimping, is I'm gonna blast it in the fridge for 10 minutes just so it chills again, um, so that it stops it getting all soft and the butter melting. And now we can give this a little crimp and there are heaps of different kind of designs you can do here. Maybe you've done some before and by all means, go ahead and do whatever you like. You can also, if you just wanna do the easiest thing, you could just grab a fork and give some imprints there. But what I'm gonna show you is the simplest crimp probably, other than using a fork. And I'm gonna use two fingers on one side and one finger on the other. I'm gonna pop my two fingers inside and then the other finger is just gonna squish it in like that and you've got one crimp here. And we're just going to keep going around like that. And once you've got all the way around your pie, you can spend a little bit of time just neatening and evening your crimps out, but do not worry too much. This is not something that's supposed to be like a beautiful kind of tart thing. It's a pie. It's a rustic, flaky, delicious pie. So if you've got some cracks in it, some tears in it, it really doesn't matter, guys. So now we're gonna prepare this for the oven. So first of all, grab yourself a fork and we are gonna stab the base all over as well as going up the sides of our pie. And this is gonna prevent the pie from puffing up too much in the oven. And the next step is to fill this with some rice or baking beans. Now, why are we doing that? Because we need to blind bake this because the filling that we're putting in is a chilled filling. So it's not gonna be baked with the pie at all. So first of all, I've got myself some grease proof paper and I'm gonna scrunch it up so it's gonna be noisy. Ready, go. <laughs> and this just means that it's gonna kind of fit the pie dish much better. So it's gonna go all into the creases. So unravel it all very gently pop it inside and now if you have baking beans by all means use those but i personally like to use rice because it gets into all the cracks whereas baking beans have a lot of space between them so your pie crust can kind of puff out still so i'm filling mine almost to the top with this rice and just give it a little compact with your hand and you don't have to throw this rice away. The best thing about this is that you can just keep it as your special baking rice. So every time you make a pie, you can reuse it. So now it's pretty much ready for the oven, but what I like to do is actually chill it again for 15 minutes because remember we have been handling it. We did the crimping, so it has had time to warm up again. And I like to bake it straight from the fridge. So I'm gonna put mine in the fridge for 15 minutes and I've got my oven preheated to 180 degrees C. That's fan assisted, because I know a lot of you are asking that. We always use fans here. Um, and then we're gonna pop it in the oven for 15 minutes. After 15 minutes, very, very carefully, take it out of the oven and you wanna get yourself a nice large bowl and using the edges of your greaseproof paper, you're gonna lift out your rice or your baking beans and just pop them in a bowl. They're gonna be hot, so let them cool down. And then we're gonna return our pie to the oven for another 20 to 25 minutes until it's lovely and golden brown. So I'll see you on the other side. So once your pie crust has cooled down, hopefully it'll look delicious and flaky, just like this one here. And now we can get on with making our silk chocolate filling. Now the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna cook our eggs to 70 degrees C because traditionally this kind of filling would use raw eggs, but I know that's a little bit of a gray area and I like to just make sure that it, they're nice and safe to eat. So we're gonna put them in a bain-marie with our sugar. So we're gonna start with three large eggs and as usual, cracking them into a separate bowl to make sure we don't get any shell in. And we're gonna pour it into this caster sugar here. 
which is 195 grams of caster sugar. You can also use granulated if that's all you can find. And we're gonna start by whisking these two together just to combine them. And now we can put it onto our bain marie. So what that is, is a saucepan with about an inch full of water in it. The main thing to watch out here is that the water is not in contact with the bottom of your bowl. We want the steam to be heating up the mixture in the bowl, not the water. So first of all, we're gonna bring the heat up to a nice high temperature just to get the water boiling. And then we're gonna drop it down to a simmer. And then we're gonna pop on our eggs and sugar. We're gonna keep it moving. We don't have to whisk it or whip it. Just keep Keep it moving until we get to 70 degrees C and then our eggs are nice and safe to eat. When we've got to 70 degrees C, we take it off the heat and we can add our next ingredient which is chocolate because this is a chocolate silk pie and we need some chocolate in here. So I have melted 170 grams of dark chocolate. I always like to bake with 70% chocolate because it's kind of bitter and you've got the sugar and the butter and the vanilla which are gonna sweeten it up a little bit. So I'm gonna pour all of this in and whisk it together. And next up to this mixture, we're gonna add a lovely, nice pinch of salt because chocolate and salt, I think, a second to caramel and salt and also about half a teaspoon of vanilla and remember you can get yourself a lovely little bottle of vanilla from cupcakegemma.com if you don't have some and then we'll just stir those in and we're going to leave this to cool down and whilst we do that we are going to move over to our mixer and we're going to get beating some butter so I've got a hundred grams of soft unsalted butter here and we're just going to pop that in and leave it for about five minutes just to soften up and kind of get a little bit whippy. Before we add the chocolate mixture, I'm just gonna scrape it up because it's a very small amount of butter and it just stick to the sides and it won't combine properly unless we give it a scrape. So now I'm gonna add just a little bit of the chocolate batter first so that it incorporates slowly. So we're gonna pop in a little blob here and then turn the mixer back on and whip them together. And once that first bit's kind of mixed through, you can see that there are some bits of butter around the edges and at the bottom. So we just wanna make sure that this is gonna combine properly. And now we're gonna put the mixer back on to a kind of medium speed and I'm gonna gradually add the rest of our chocolate mixture. And I just had that going on a higher speed for a couple of minutes and you can see it is looking pretty silky, just like the name suggests. So we have one final ingredient to go in and that is some whipped cream. So I've got 225 grams of double cream here and into that I'm gonna add 10 grams of icing sugar and we're gonna whip those to soft peaks. So that's lovely and kind of, it's loose, but it's holding a little bit of shape and that is what we mean by soft peaks. So now it's time to fold this into our chocolate mixture here. So I'm gonna do that like we did before, a little bit at a time. So start with a small blob of the cream and we'll fold that through. And once the first lot's in, you can add a little bit more, probably two more goes, <laughs> and just fold it through each time. And now it is really thick and it is shiny and it is silky and all that's left to do is chuck it all in.
And then I'm just bouncing it around to even it out. It looks so good, I love it. And now obviously this needs to set. So I'm gonna go and put it in the fridge. It needs to go in for about four hours um, to fully set. But don't worry, I've got one in there waiting for us. So here is the one I made earlier. You can see it's completely set. And let's just make this even more indulgent with a good old blob of some more Chantilly cream. So just, again, a bit of double cream with some sugar in it just to sweeten it up a bit. <laughs> this is one of my favorite things about American pies, is that you just put this massive, huge blob of cream on top, and it's just amazing. So it's nearly done, but just to make it look a little bit prettier, I'm gonna put some chocolate shavings on there. So you can do this really easily with a chocolate bar and a knife. Just along the kind of thin edge, you're just gonna scrape your knife down it. And now it is time to eat some of this pie. So I'm gonna to attempt to cut it and get a slice out. So we'll see how this goes. I can't wait to eat this pie. Look at this pastry though before. I'm gonna break a little bit off. Oh, look at that. Flaky layers of beautiful flakiness. Mmm, so buttery. Okay, we've gotta do this. Mm. That is a cracking pie. You get that really yummy, crunchy texture from the, pit, from the pie crust and then this filling, like no wonder it's called a silk pie. It is smooth and decadent and indulgent and you guys are gonna absolutely love this. And please don't be scared about making pie, like I'm not the world's best pie maker, but I figured it out and I tried over and over again until I found a pie crust recipe that I was happy with. So hopefully this works for you, but don't give up, just try and try it again. And in the meantime, go and get your cookies. If you're in the UK, please head over to cupcakegemma.com to order yourself some fresh baked crumbs and doilies cookies they do not get better than this and keep tagging us in your photos over on instagram maybe you get the cookies and you want to share your break snap with us make sure you uh, tag us hashtag cupcake gemma and hashtag crumbs and doilies so we can all see and share your photos and we'll be back very soon with another recipe for you guys but until then enjoy this pie and all the other delicious treats that we've got in store for you mm.